Journey Dragons. I am glad that you are here. Today is Friday. It is January 14th, 2022. It's the 96th day of school and it's a Friday before a long weekend. Monday is Martin Luther King Day, so we have it off. Uh, Friday always means dad joke Friday, so here we go. Here's our first one. What did the one hat say to the other? You stay here. I'll go on ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hopefully you guys are ready for a respectful and responsible day. Our first responsibility is to show respect for the rights that we have in this country and um, at the school. So we do this by daily saying the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, doing our school pledge, as well as doing our moment of silence. When we do our pledge, we want you guys to stop what you're doing, stand up tall, put your hand over your hearts like this, say the pledge loudly, clearly, and with pride. If you would please stand for the pledge, remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge myself as a Kennedy Dragon to be ready for the day ahead of me. I will be respectful of myself my teachers, and all others I meet throughout the day. I promise to be responsible for myself, my actions, and my learning. I'll work my hardest to be the best dragon I can be. All right, our second responsibility each morning is to uh, prevent uh, the spread of germs, and the best way we can do this is by washing our hands. When we wash our hands, we want to make sure that we're getting all parts of our hands, the palms of our hands, the backs of our hands, our fingertips, in between our fingers, uh, our wrists, and our thumbs. When we wash our hands, we want to use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer like this. Uh, we want to make sure that we are washing for at least 20 seconds. Let's model what that looks like now. Okay, go ahead and get the palms of your hands to the back of your hands. Back of your hands. Get it. we have said our pledges, done our moment of silence, and washed our hands. Let's show respect for those that have birthdays today. Happy birthday. Oh, first of all, I forgot Noah Ellis. Noah Ellis had a birthday yesterday. There are no Friday birthdays, but Saturday, Mia Flores will be 11. Annabella Miha Paulette will be 11. Alani Wilson-Turner will be 6. Also, Miss Jones and Miss Rhonda in the cafeteria have birthdays on Saturday. On Sunday, Arlani Hudson will be 8. Uh, Gabriel Portillo will be 7. Haley Blake will be six, Chelsea Angulo will be six, and also Miss Goodman will have a birthday. And on Monday, we'll be out of school because it's Martin Luther King Day. Caitlin Smith will be nine years old. Happy birthday to you guys. We'll make sure you get your birthday. Our next responsibility is to make sure we're making our lunch choice. Today's Friday, so of course, it's cheese pizza, sweet yellow corn, and fresh cocktail, fruit cocktail. So if you don't want pizza, you can always get yogurt and muffin or the pb and Time for dad joke number two. Why didn't the skeleton climb the steep mountain? He didn't have any guts. <laughs> right, let's go over some answers for our problem of the week. The kindergarten through first grade problem uh, about Miss Goodman and her five missing buttons. There are six different choices that you could make. Um, from zero blue to zero blue and five red, one blue and four red, two blue and three red, three blue and two red, four blue and one red, or five blue and zero red. So that's it. And that's how many different, five, six different choices you can make. All right, for our second and third grade question, uh, Mr. Butcher bought two pieces of gum for 79 cents. He used only coins and gave exact change to list as many possibilities. Come. So there's tons of possibilities. So um, 79 pennies would be one way. Uh, that would be the one with the most coins. Uh, the one with the least amount of coins would be three quarters and four pennies. Uh, but there's tons of ways that you can do it. Um, I like the person the class that did two quarters, five nickels, and four pennies. But lots of different ways that you could do it. 
All right, and then the last one, our fourth and fifth grade question. Uh, Mr. Newport bought a hat that was three times is it the amount of um, Mr. Vickers hat, which was $25. He paid with a $100 bill. How much money did he get back in change? So you multiply uh, three times 25, gives you 75, and then you subtract 75 from 100, so you'll get one, you'll get $25. Someone put, I don't even know how you got a $100 bill, Mr. Newport. So there we go. Those are your math problems of the week. We'll have a new one Hi, next I'm week. Anderson and I'm Edwin from Be The Voice Club. Help us help local animals in need by bringing in items the shelter needs. Some items include dish soap, laundry detergent, non-clumping cat litter, pate style canned cat food, cat toys, Kong brand dog toys, blankets or towels without stuffing, leashes or collars, dog or cat carriers, kitten and puppy milk replacement, or meat baby food. Other than food, these items do not have to be new. Do you have any old towels or blankets at home? Ask your parents if you can donate them. Did, you, did your dog outgrow your collar? Maybe you can donate that. Drop off items in the box in front of the media center. If you have any questions, ask Ms. McConey. Time for dad joke number three. What? are the best smelling insects. Deodor ants. <laughs> All right, it's time for today's morning message. It's on purpose and uniqueness. At some point in our lives, most of us will be asked the question, what do you want to do when you grow up and why do you want to do it? Probably the most accepted answer to that question would be this, to give, the world and give to the world in some positive way and to make the world a little bit better. And that's why every life is important. Every human being can do something wonderful in the world. Someone wise once put it this way, remember that you are needed. There is at least one important work that will, to be done that will not be done unless you do it. Always keep in mind that we need you. The world needs the absolute, unique, and unrepeatable gift that only you can give the world. So think about how Mr. Butcher make today your masterpiece or not. Remember, choice is yours. And that's true. You have value and you have worth. And it's no one sees that value and no one sees that worth except through your actions. So make sure your actions are bringing something good to the world and bring that unique gift that only you can bring. Last dad joke of the day. Why are piggy banks so wise? Because they're filled with common sense. <laughs> All right, there are times where you have to wear a mask. Like you have to wear a mask when you're on the bus and you have to wear a mask if you're here quarantining at school because you're exposed to COVID. So if you are having to wear your mask, let's make sure we're wearing it the right way. Make sure it's on over your nose, make sure it's on over your mouth and make sure it's tied around your uh, ear so it doesn't fall down. You guys have a great day. That is all we have for announcements. So please help me. Me and your teachers keep you safe. That is our job. And your job is to help us keep you safe. And you can help us by being a ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focused on graduating in the year. Because when you are a ready, respectful, and responsible student focused on graduation, you, you are, are boldly committed to student success. I love you very much. Have a great day. Good morning, I'm Mr. Butcher, the principal, and I've met all of you guys, and you guys all know that I have one job here at Kennedy Elementary School, and that job is to keep you guys safe. That's my job, to keep you guys safe. Um, and like I've told you, I can't keep you safe all by myself. That's why we have wonderful teachers here to help us keep you safe. But even then, we can't help, you keep, help keep you safe um, by ourselves. That's why we need your help. So. Throughout the year, we will have some drills. We will have fire drills, we will have intruder drills, and we'll have bad weather drills. So we'll be practicing three types of drills. We practice these so if in case of a real one, we know exactly what to do.
So right now we are going to do what is called a drill seminar. We're going to talk about the three types of drills that we will have at our, at our school. We are, these are not real, so when we say we're going to do a fire drill, that doesn't mean there's a fire in the building. It just means we're going to practice what we do if there was a fire in the building. So don't worry, don't think that the building is on fire and don't think that you're going to be hurt. Just think we are going to practice and we're going to practice so that we know what to do in case of a fire. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, inclement weather. When the storm is stormy outside and it's really windy and there's a possibility of a tornado, what do we do uh, when there's bad weather? So we'll talk about that as well. That's called a uh, weather drill. And then the third one we're going to do is an intruder drill. If there's someone in the building that's not uh, supposed to be in our building or there's someone out on our field that's not supposed to be on the field and we're worried that he might, he or she might be doing something that's not keeping us safe, what do we do in case of those drills? So we're going to talk about those three uh, types of drills now and then your teacher is going to practice them with you uh, or talk about them with you and then throughout the year we'll actually do it. We're actually going to do our first fire drill in a couple days so we'll be doing that as well. So today we're just going to talk about it. Next week or next couple days we're going to practice them and so we want to make sure the design, the reason why we do this is so we can help keep you safe and so that you know what to do if these drills, if and when these drills happen, so that when it does happen in real life, if it does, hopefully it never does, that you know exactly what to do. Okay, what do we do if we hear the fire alarm go off? This is what the fire alarm will sound like. When the fire alarm goes off, it will sound like that, and there will be a flashing light in the hallways. When you hear that sound, you need to stop what you're doing and put your eyes on your teacher. Your teacher will have you all line up in a straight line, and they will take you outside uh, in the design spot. Each class has a different place to go, so you need to know uh, your teacher is going to tell you where you need to go. It's very important that when we do our fire drills that you do not talk. The reason why we don't want you to talk is because we are trying to make sure that everyone's in the, out of the building, we're making sure that everyone's in the right place, and we may have to give you directions on moving just in case there is a fire and emergency vehicles need to get to where you are. So it's extremely important that you do move without talking. Your teachers will take you outside to the design, a designated spot. When you do that, you're going to go all the way out there. You're going to turn and you're going to face the building. The reason why we face the building is so that we can know um, what is going on and you'll be able to get the directions from um, me or Mr. Newbert or fire department if they need to give you directions. So when you hear this sound, Make sure that you stop what you're doing, line up silently, follow your teacher outside. When you get outside to your designated spot, you're going to stop and you're going to turn around. At that point, your teachers will be checking to make sure that all students are there. If everyone is there, we'll hold up a green sign. If we are missing someone or something is help, we'll hold up the red sign that says need help. And that's what we do during a fire drill. Our second type of drill is called a severe weather drill or tornado drill. When you hear this sound, this is what it should sound like. If you hear that sound, what you're going to do is you're going to stop what you're doing and listen to your teacher. Your teacher will take you outside in the hallway and you guys will get in the hallway in your uh, de designated spot. You will face the wall. You'll get on your knees and you'll cover your head. You should look like this 
when you are out in the hallway. I do know it's uncomfortable and I do know it gets hot, but we need to make sure that we know, are going there because we want to make sure that we're safe and we're whole, protecting our head. So that's what's it. Talking because we're going to be walking up and down the halls and we have to give directions to people because we may have to move you to a different spot that may not that may be more safe or we have to uh, tell you where we need you to go so it's real important that you are not talking so when you hear this sound <coughs> stop what you're doing, look at your teacher, listen for the directions, and follow where you're supposed to go. You'll get, face the wall, get on your knees, cover your head, do it without talking. The teachers will be checking to make sure you're all in the right place, and when it is over, we'll tell you you can sit up. And that is the severe weather drill. The last type of drill that we will talk about is an intruder drill. An intruder drill will be done to practice what to do in case there is a person around our school, on our field, or in our building that is not supposed to be there and is causing a threat to the safety of students, teachers, staff members, or family members. When the intruder drill starts, I will come on the announcements and I will say, pardon the interruption, teachers and students, please move to a lockdown position at this point. When that happens, you need to stop what you're doing, put your eyes on the teacher and give her your ears and make sure you're listening. The teacher will go and make sure the door is locked and that, they're, that the window is covered and they will move you to a spot in the, inside the classroom that is safe and out of the um, view from that glass window. The teacher will ask you to be quiet and will continue teaching throughout the time just in a very close and quiet position. Please make sure that you guys are listening to your teacher and you are staying quiet and make sure that you are out of sight of the um, window in your door. In a f uh, that should last for a few minutes and then I will come on to the announcements and I will say teachers please put your red and green uh, cards outside your door. When you put the red and green cards outside your door, if everything is good, you will give us the green card. If you are missing someone or you have someone that is in your class that's not supposed to be, you will put the yellow or you will put the red out at that time, the red that says need help at that time. We will come in at that time and we will ask you what you need. At the end of the drill, I will come on the announcements again and I will say thank you, pardon the interruption, thank you for uh, participating in our lockdown. You may now go back to regular, uh, stop, a regular classroom and that will be the end of our drill. We are almost done with our severe weather fire drill and intruder drill seminar. One thing that you need to know before I let the teachers talk to you about exactly where you go for these drills is that you need to know if you are walking in the hallway, if you are in a different classroom, if you are in the bathroom, if you're in the front office or you're in the media center and these drills happen, it's very important that you go to the closest class. Do not walk all the way back to your class Go to the, with the closest class or the closest adult that's there with you. Do not go all the way back to your class um, and don't do that. If there is an intruder drill, if there is an intruder drill, uh, same thing. You'll just lock down in the classroom that you're in. So don't go back to your class. If for some reason you're in the bathroom and you have to come out, go to the closest room to you the closest room to you. All right, that concludes my part of the, uh, the severe weather, fire drill, and uh, intruder drill seminar. I'm now going to ask your teachers to talk about the specific places that you go when you are doing a severe weather, a fire drill, or an intruder drill. Thank you.